Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and buckle up because today I've got a super interesting knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the Liang Ma Model 18 Integral Folding Knife. Now, if you're not familiar with these materials, let me just say this. This is a, uh, a very expensive variant of this knife. Uh, in fact, the model itself, just the base model, is pretty expensive. It's not nearly as expensive as the one you're seeing here, but it does come in a few different configurations that vary in price. And we are definitely going to talk about that price tag. These are manufactured by Riot, but they are designed by Liang Ma. That combination is extremely potent. So I would ask, you know, if you're, if you're watching this and you don't like expensive knives, this video is not going to be for you. But for those of you who are interested, I would ask that you keep in mind this is not just about the materials, the execution of these materials, right? This is the type of knife that makes what I do super fun. Because when you take a production company like Riot and you take a designer like Liang Ma and you create some, you create something like this with an incredible amount of detail, that's where magic happens. That's where I get all the lightning and all the yes, because it's really exciting. So. There are lots of, uh, you know, integral knives out there that are made by Riot, and some of them are really, really cool, and some of them are super basic. This one is, in my opinion, extremely cool and very, very complex in a very satisfying way. It all just sort of came together, and I'm really, really excited about it. So, um, it is expensive, but I'm going to tell you why I ended up buying this thing for myself. Thanks so much to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. I will absolutely link this knife and you know what's available, what's still available right down below. This knife actually came out in 2021. I did not know that it existed until here fairly recently and as soon as I found out that it existed, I bought it immediately. Um, let's go ahead and do the, uh, let's go and do the measurement here. Overall length is coming in at about eight and a half inches. Blade length is coming in at about 3.75, cutting edge is coming in at about 3.6. How about some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2, where is it? Here it is, there we go. So you can see here, this is definitely a full-size knife. It's actually gonna be about the same length as your uh, Chris Reeve Umnum's on, your Sebenza 31, and I think is the Inkosi the same, right? That's kind of about the same space that it occupies in the universe, right? It's obviously very different from Chris Reeve designs, but it, it, it definitely occupies the same amount of space. So if you have one of those, that's kind of, that's the, the general vibe of mass that I'm getting from it. Let's go ahead and do uh, a size comparison up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3. There we go. So you can see there once again, a lot more cutting edge than either of those knives, despite being close to the same size as the PM2. And last but not least, let's go ahead and do the Benchmade Griptilian, uh, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and the Benchmade Bugout. Yeah, so there you go. All right, so how's the action on this? Well, it's a Riot. Uh, this guy came quite a bit smoother. A lot of times when I get a Riot, a brand new Riot, they're a bit tight and they sort of break in. That was the case with my 229 and various other models. I have definitely been a fan of Riot's manufacturing quality for a long time. Um, this guy is, wow, wow, incredibly smooth. I've handled Leong Mod designs before and I gotta say, a lot of them exhibit the same qualities there. It's not like a, you know, like a Grimsmo Norseman where the thing is flying down so quickly you question whether or not gravity is different for that knife, right? That's almost like a dangerous level of fall shuddiness. This guy is just pure glass. It is ridiculous and incredibly satisfying. Access to the lock bar is wonderful, nicely carved out there so you can approach it from the side. No double clutch. The part that actually engages with your thumb if you're doing a one-handed disengagement is this flat area right here. And then uh, you're free to move your hand out of the way and just let it fall into the closed position. This is wonderful. It is extremely good. You have one option for deployment and it is a flipper tab, which does not bother me if it is done correctly. And this flipper tab is done correctly. The detent is also exquisite. Let's go ahead and do carry profile up against the Spyderco Para 3. So you can see here that this guy is 
maybe a tad thicker, not much. The pivot sticks out a bit, but I can't see that causing any sort of meaningful issue for anybody who actually chooses to carry this knife. And you know, people are gonna look at the price tag and a lot of people are gonna go, who would ever carry that? A lot of times that question is asked by people who have never purchased knives in that price tier, which is completely and totally understandable. I remember asking that question myself. And the truth is, is once you start buying knives in this territory, you become much more likely to actually carry things in this territory. So believe it or not, a lot of people who spend this type of money on knives actually carry this stuff. Some don't, it just depends on who you are, right? But that's your choice to make. Carry profile, so length and height up against the PM2 or para and para three, not or. Uh, yeah, actually for, you know, for as much knife as you're getting here, the, the, uh, the, the closed length is actually a, sh a tad bit shorter than the PM2. It's also nowhere near as tall as either. Even this, this head up here is, is still just, it's not even really approaching anywhere close to the max height of the PM2 or para three. So that's cool. So these are gonna vary in weight, guys. Um, the blade material we have here is Damasteel, which is not your standard, not your run-of-the-mill Damascus, which is actually, I shouldn't say that because Damascus can be literally any two compositions. Uh, Damasteel is proprietary and it is always powdered PMC 27 and RWL 34, resulting in a very, very beautiful, right, if it's finished correctly, very beautiful. This, is, this has got a nice polish on it. Uh, but performance that rivals or is almost identical to CPM 154, which is actually one of, if not my all time favorite compositions. So not only is it pretty to look at, it actually functions well, um, which is really cool. Damascus steel uh, will always uh, add a, 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 a an increase to the price tag, right? Here lately, it's really, wow. Like you get, you know, look at Wii knives or anybody else is doing production knives and you have your option of M390, or you can get the Super One in Damasteel, and they add an enormous uh, amount of money to it. And, you know, it should it should command a higher price tag because it is definitely more complicated to create, absolutely. Um, but that's gonna be one of those eye of the beholder things. You are not forced into purchasing the Damasteel version of this. The standard version of this knife comes in CPM S90V, which I think is really cool, not M390, S90V, not an inexpensive material by itself either, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, you, either way, you are definitely, you have a choice and you are definitely getting a, a premium blade material one way or another. The S90V will absolutely outperform the Damasteel when it comes to edge retention, but not in terms of toughness or ease of sharpening. When it comes to corrosion resistance, I think they're about the same but I don't make blade steel, right? I'm just guessing and I haven't memorized the compositions of these things. So I just wanted to drive that point home. This one is titanium and an integral uh, titanium frame lock. So not, not the integral lock, but the entire frame is was milled from a single block of titanium. And while the benefit of this is lost on some people, the value of this is lost on some people, the fact is, is that integral knives cost more to create than a sandwich or pillar construction frame lock. So this is also going to add to the cost, just factually. Uh, this particular version also is sporting Mokutai scales. So this is Mokume and Timascus. So titanium Damascus with a Mokume, uh, with Mokume layers in there, same with the pocket clip. And it is beautifully done. I mean, it is masterfully executed. <laughs> um, the uh, the lines and everything, I mean, it's, it's just really beautiful. I'm, I'm getting into the meat and potatoes part of this. This is gonna be a long, detailed, lengthy review because I feel very strongly about this model. Um, but uh, it's uh, it's really cool. Now, there are variants out there that have, uh, it's just a, an open or exposed titanium frame lock, right? That's the basic version. That one is also incredibly detailed and I would uh, suggest that you go and look at all of the detail in that one, even though it is their most basic model. Uh, or the, the most basic variant of this model. There's a lot of detail in that textured titanium that they have sitting in what would be the inlay position for this, you know, the, the inlay versions. Um, and then they also have some various carbon fiber versions. So the weight is going to vary is what I'm saying. This particular variant is coming in at about 5.86 ounces. I would venture to guess that the carbon fiber versions are going to be the lightest. They will probably still come in around five ounces. That would be my guess, perhaps slightly lighter. This is an integral knife. And on the inside, I don't believe there is any additional milling. Not that they had a whole lot of room considering what material is on top, 
But for an integral knife with uh, a nearly four inch blade, I can't say that I am too upset about the weight. The balance is gonna be back here. It is about in the middle of this, you know, where they expect your index finger to go. Um, but it is maybe three quarters of an inch behind the, uh, sorry, I'm trying to get it. It's actually more towards the rear of that area right there, but it is three quarters of an inch or so behind the pivot. Uh, in hand, it definitely feels good. It definitely feels like the weight is towards this end, but that's to be expected because it's a titanium integral knife. Uh, the carbon fiber versions will feel a little bit more balanced, right? And that's what I expect most people to be interested in anyway. Um, let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'll get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. The nice thing about an integral knife, despite there being screws on the body, and these are really just for the inlays here, there's really nothing else you have to do except remove the pivot, which is what's holding the blade in. There is no disassembly for the frame itself unless you want to take the um, inlays out of there. I don't know why you would, but if you wanted to, that's the only reason to do that. Um, but yeah, disassembly will be very easy. We have a T8 pivot. Uh, these pivots, the, the pivot is captive, um, which is nice. It should make it easy to get that out of there. Getting it back in on an integral knife can be a little bit tricky uh, unless you know what you're doing. A lot of integrals are more or less the same when you're taking them apart. They are, once you once you kind of figure it out, once you do it the first time, it's pretty easy to do it over and over again. I'm not, you know, most of the time there's not really that much of a reason to take it apart, but if you needed to, you could do it fairly easily. The nice thing is, is that all of the screws that he has decided to use for any other part of the knife, they are all T8, which is just fantastic. That's great. I think, uh, oh, we need to um, actually measure the blade stock thickness. So let's go ahead and close this guy up here real quick and we'll get that done. I think it's deceptively, you know what? I'm gonna say that's 145,000. Let's see if I'm right. Oh, it's even less. It's going towards 135,000. So there you go. It's kind of right there in medium territory. All right, so. Wow, this is a good looking knife. This is just a really good looking knife. I love, I love the flow of the lines here. This is a perfect example of how something can be both extremely ergonomic and beautiful. I love the little notch rest for your thumb right here. I love how the transition from this area to this ramp to the top of the blade, I love how that's all pretty smooth. It's not super duper angular. Wherever you're resting your thumb, there's no area that's so pronounced that your finger feels uncomfortable. There's a little bit of a choke up position right here because they've left this part of the blade flat, so you absolutely can choke up. There's a bit of an argument on exactly how to end this area right here. I think it looks pretty nice, the way that this has ended. Personally, I always prefer that the blade is a little bit wider, comes down to here, and then sort of transitions into a curvature so that it just looks more aesthetically pleasing. He chose it, he chose to end it on the exact same line, right? So it just sort of stops, the blade just stops and continues right here. Pros and cons to all of that. Some people aren't gonna like how that looks. People who use their knives are gonna say, well, you know, over time, if you you know, sharpening it, it's, it, it's gonna create a problem or it's gonna be a little bit uglier. Other people are gonna say it's never been a problem for me. Some people are gonna say that's why you put a sharpening choil right there. Some people are gonna say, well, if you put a sharpening choil right there, then you're gonna get hung up on things when you choke up and cut so close to it that the material gets sort of caught up in there. So as far as the aesthetic, how the blade and the final cutting apex transition into the handle, I think it looks really, really good, right? You are free to disagree with me, but I like how it looks. Every edge has not only been chamfered, but it's been chamfered in a way that sort of accentuates the overall look of everything. It's not like there's just like a, oh yeah, that edge needs to be chamfered, let's go ahead and chamfer it, right? It's sort of done differently depending on which part of the knife it is, and that, <laughs> It just ends up looking beautiful. Speaking of beautiful, let's take a look at the actual finish on this titanium because it is not your typical tumbled finish. This is part of what I'm talking about when I'm, I wanted to say at the beginning, right? There have been some integral knives that are made by Riot and maybe designed by a different company here lately that have sported a similar price tag and uh, have been a, a bit offensive to me. 
And I want to be clear about that. I want to make sure that you guys know is that it's not because I think that just, you know, baseline, anything that is an integral and made by Riot with similar materials should always meet this very specific price point. I was upset with the price point because it was like, hey, if you're going to charge us that much, you got to do something extra. There needs to be more detail, not only in the finish on the titanium, but just everywhere on the knife, there needs to be more detail, more attention paid to the, the little things, right? Every last part of this knife is impressive. The pivot collar is really cool. The finish on the titanium is beautiful. I don't know if we want to call that like an eggshell. It's just extremely nice. This area back here, I love how this sort of just transitions into, like they let the, he let the, uh, he could have just continued this line right here, the chamfered edge and just gone all the way, but he let these inlays come around a little bit so you get to see them at the back. Even the lanyard hole looks cool, which is a rare thing for me to say. Look at that lanyard hole. It sure does look cool. I'm not going to use it, but you know what? I like how it looks. Everything. The uh, the way that the inlays, right, just from the titanium to the, ti the uh, Mokotai here, it's just absolutely gorgeous. I'd be lying if I said that, you know, I... I, I wish that he had offered a Zerkatai inlay, but that's just personal preference, right? Um, but the, the Mokotai is, is very beautiful. Now, some people are going to point out they don't really like these screws here. I mean, his old, the alternative probably would have been something like uh, just some sort of adhesive, and I don't know that that's necessarily the best thing. I don't really notice the screws all that much. There are some parts of the anodizing that are light enough that the screws kind of blend. It depends on where the shadows are right here. Obviously, the screws are a little bit easier to see, but you go like this, and they almost disappear. So I don't really have a problem with that. Every last line on this, every last line looks beautiful, and I love it. I don't feel confined ergonomically just feel like the knife was made for the human hand, and it's nice. Uh, also, when we're talking about beauty, what about this grind? Holy moly, that is just excellent. We have a flat that only carries out about 35 to 40% the length of the blade, and then a nice big swedge up here uh, out to a, a nice fine tip, right? And it looks like maybe the tip is a little upswept, but it's not. It's actually straight down. Nice puncture tip. The blade does absolutely get pretty thin down here. It's not an absolute laser beam, but you know, if you plan to use this, this is going to be an extremely functional blade. If you go with S90V, you're going to have a nice stainless blade that can puncture and cut for however long you need it to, as long as you're not trying to puncture or cut things like concrete or rebar, which is, I don't know. Do I even have to say it? That's not a, you don't, those aren't things that you, should, you, cut, you cut with a knife, right? But it's great. The blade is gorgeous. The jimping extends out to a point that is meaningful. It's just beautiful. The edge is up here, nicely knocked down. I believe on the S90V blades, they are satin. It's possible he offers a tumbled finish like with a high polish, and I just didn't notice. But Riot does a good satin finish, so I'm sure that it looks fine. You might, if it is a satin finish, you might expect on the S90V variants for this area to be a bit sharp. But then again, there's no reason why the Damasteel version wouldn't be the same, so perhaps they're all the same. This edge right here, not sharp, as it should be. Uh, the blade is, other than this area right here, which is going to be a little bit, you know, controversial depending on who you ask, the blade, in my opinion, is perfect. It's beautiful, you have an enormous amount of cutting edge, and it's just excellent. <laughs> it's just really, really excellent. The flipper tab, I've already kind of touched on this. It's the right shape, the right amount of jimping. It's not sharp on either side. It's low profile, and it allows that blade to fully snap into place, and you get the full satisfaction of it. You're not feeling like you're fighting to find a good position on the flipper tab. Your finger will find it, and it will do exactly what it is supposed to do, which is deploy that blade. And not only deploy it, but deploy it in a way where it feels reassuring, like that blade is definitely coming out and locking out into the open position. And it does that. It feels good. There's a lot of it, so you really, bam, right? It's just a, God, it looks good being flipped. I don't say that often. This knife looks good being flipped. Just looks cool. Man, I love the lines on the inlay. I love how it sort of sweeps up here. And on the other side, the benefit of that is it sort of covers the frame lock. So I would recommend the non-exposed, I would recommend going with an overlay version. If you, if you don't mind frame locks, go ahead, it's fine. But the nice thing about this is while you're using it, most of the pressure from your hand is going to go into this overlay material and not directly on the frame lock, which is nice. 
You don't have to worry about that while you're flipping it. Your fingers are definitely not going to be on there while you're flipping it. And you're not going to alter, you know, the lockup percentage or the lockup geometry by squeezing it really hard while you're using it. This would be a joy to use continuously. The ergonomics really are that great. And it's, 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 it's always nice when you can feel like you're comfortable and locked in on a knife with a pretty straight profile. You have to put these lines in exactly the right places to get that to work, at least in my experience, which is not extensive, right? I mean, I'm, I'm just a, I'm a design reviewer, right? So take that for what it's worth. But I really like that. The one part of the knife that's, I'm not going to say it's bad. I'm going to say it falls short of being perfect is the pocket clip. And this is a, really, this isn't a, a, a massively an opinion, right? There's no way to say exactly what the perfect shape or depth of clip is. This is the type of knife that can get away with a popsicle stick style pocket clip because of the straight lines of uh, the, the, the handle profile, right? You can get away with that. The only part of this that I don't love is the ball bearing at the end. I don't love these. They pinch a little bit and they're kind of, sometimes you have to fight them on the way in and out of your pocket. Now, some people swear by these and they just love them. They say they're the best clips in the whole world. I don't, I don't really like these as much. I prefer, I do prefer a milled titanium clip, which this absolutely is. I like it when they sort of swoop down and back up just a little bit, right? This is a stamped clip, but something more like, it doesn't necessarily have to be a swoop like this, um, but a straight milled clip with just a ramp of titanium at the end, I think would have been better. If I was going to, you know, grade this clip, I'd probably give it a B. Um, it's, it's fine. It works. And the carry depth is definitely good. That's about where it's going to carry in your pocket. Uh, I like how this is recessed. This clip is actually recessed a little bit into the mocha tie underneath. So that's nice. Um, but that's, you know, with the rest of this, this knife being so like right to my preferences, uh, that's the one thing that sticks out to me. Um, but it's still pretty good. And it's got, no matter which version you pick, um, you know, on the titanium one, it's hard to say. I don't have it in hand. I don't know if there's a flat area on that uh, titanium, that all titanium one, where it's not riding on the texturing. I would think there would be, but I don't know for sure. These other inlay versions, it's going to ride very gracefully right over, uh, right over your uh, your pants pocket. You know, and that ball is actually going to roll in there as you put it in and out of your pocket. It does have a steel lock bar insert, which is I actually can't tell if it's doubling as I don't think it is because it doesn't need to. In fact, no, it, it isn't. There is no over travel stop attachment to that, but it doesn't need it because there's an overlay here. It probably does double as the over travel stop on the standard titanium version because this whole uh, frame lock would be exposed at that point. So that's fine. Um, we have a stop pin that's located right here and there is a massive amount of shouldering. That thing goes deep in there. No blade play. <laughs> I can't, I don't have to say it. No blade play up, down, left, or right. Really nice. That lockout sound is just real nice. Like that. Little things. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm noticing uh, just little tiny details that I like about this more and more as I continue to handle it. No pivot lash whatsoever. So freaking consistent. Every last little bit of this feels identical. It doesn't matter where the blade is. It's just so perfect. And a nice click. That blade sinks almost entirely into the handle, right? Normally, when that happens, you have to worry. Because it's, a, it's, not, a, it's not a narrow blade. It's still a fairly tall blade. Uh, you have to worry like, oh, can I touch the blade back here? Well, no. Because this is all covered by the in uh, integral uh, frame lock, right? The whole one piece thing. Very cool. Very satisfying to see that blade. That's why it looks so cool when you flip it. The entire blade disappears into the handle and then seems to come out of nowhere when you flip it. I love this. I love it. It's so good. God, it's just a really satisfying thing like to hold. Uh, the centering is perfect. Do I need to say that? But there you go. The centering is freaking perfect on this guy. No detent, no detent lash or anything like that. Amazing integral. On to that price. Let's talk about this. Base price of the Model 18, $600. Some of the carbon fiber inlay variants will go up to about $690. Uh, maybe there's another one in there that's a little bit more. I'm not really sure. You just kind of have to look. 
Um, and then we have this version, this ultra crazy version for $1,259. Obviously, I felt that it was worth that because I bought it. I did have to grip my teeth a little bit, but this is the only knife in my collection that is not only an integral, not only an integral frame lock with mocha tie inlays, but an integral titanium frame lock with mocha tie inlays, a damasteel blade with beautiful lines, beautiful functionality, beautiful ergonomics, incredible execution, and awesome attention to fit and finish and polishing and just look at the finish on this titanium. This is beautiful. I don't I don't own a knife that's that has this much detail. This is honestly the most well, it, it, th this knife has more detail than anything else in my entire collection. And believe me, I have a lot of knives in my collection that I love for detail. But I do not have something that's quite this crazy and this... This, is, this, this knife is exactly what I mean when I say I like knives that have initially a simple looking aesthetic, a classic knife aesthetic. And then all of the details and, and complexity are there if you seek them out. So... It's going to be real easy. and I mean, this is a long review, right? So those of you who have made it this far, uh, trust me, I'm right about this. The vast majority of people have dropped off at this point. The people who just wanted to come here to complain about the price, they have already done that and they are gone. Look down in my comment section. I promise you they're there and there's no way they watch the entire thing. A lot of times people look at the materials and they go, it's titanium. Like, let's say they're looking at the base one, 600 bucks. It's made by Riat, so that means China. It's made out of titanium and S90V. I can get a titanium knife and S90V for $290 or $300 from this company, blah, blah, blah. That's it. Their system of value goes no further than that. And if that's their own personal system of value, and then they make decisions based on that, that's fine. But to pretend that there should be some sort of universal system that is based on exactly that, that applies to everybody and everybody who's making knives and all. No, it's wrong. That's the simplest way to look at it. This thing is a titanium integral knife. That right there is going to make it cost more money. It's made by Riot. I think it's pretty easy to tell that Riot is kind of a step above. There's companies like Maxace that are approaching them in terms of quality, right? But Riot has consistently been putting out insane quality here lately. Insane quality. This is Damasteel, right? This particular one is Damasteel. If it's not Damasteel, it's S90V. S90V is not a cheap steel that is made in the USA. It's not like China has their own S90V. No, they get this from Crucible. That is powder formed Crucible S90V and it is expensive. Absolutely, right? Carbon fiber, you go with all titanium, the finish work on it definitely costs more money. All of these little teeny tiny angles, all the chamfering, right? Just the pivot, little things like that. It's going to add to the cost. So, I am not just universally offended by Chinese integral knives that cost around 600 bucks. It's not that simple. If you're going to charge that much, bring your A game. Bring something cool to the table. Execute it properly. Impress me. This is impressive. This goes above and beyond. Liang Ma consistently designs knives that are not only interesting to look at, not only beautiful to look at, but actually work with your hand. And they look not like all those little tiny things. This is made by, this is designed by somebody who cares about all of those things, who obsesses over these little tiny details, and who knows that the people who are interested in his knives will also obsess over those little tiny details. I was... I had to grit my teeth through a $1,259 knife purchase, right? Definitely, I did. But I felt it. As soon as I handled this, it was immediate. The la <laughs> It's pretty rare that I handle a knife and the moment that I touch it, the moment... I haven't even fully comprehended everything about the knife yet, but it's like the electricity from the moment I touch it, it just neurons fire and my brain goes i have to have this this is a this is an item of quality and i love this that is instantly what i felt now if we're going to compare you know because i know i know that the one that's going to get brought up and, and honestly the one i'm referring to is the james brand the barnes it's a cool knife right that's also an integral knife that's made by riot it's using premium materials like m390 and titanium you put that thing side to side with this, not even this one, the most basic version of this Model 18, right? Which they are also charging. In fact, they're charging less now. I think the base price in the barns is $50 higher. Even if it is at right at 600, 
it is very easy to tell which one has more work in it. Absolutely. And it's not just, ooh, shiny. No, there is more work in this Model 18. Definitely, right? Does it feel high, the $600 price tag? It's really hard, right? It's really hard for me to calculate that. But the best way I can put it is, let's take the most basic version of the Model 18, S90V, which is, I think, satin finished. You have the titanium uh, integral, uh, the whole uh, integral frame, right? And it's the exposed frame lock. Now let's pretend for a second that some company in the United States tried to do exactly the same thing. Let's say Hinderer. They get all the CAD information, right? Whatever. And they do, they try to make the exact same knife. Do you know how much that would cost? Just the type, just the basic version. E that would easily be well over a thousand dollars. Easily, right? So we can't sit here and say, oh, it's just materials. No, because Again, if this if this were made in the USA, holy crap. Oh my gosh, it would be way more expensive, right? It's not going to be for everybody. It's not going to be. But if you if you're the type of person who is ready to transition into something truly spectacular, right? And you know what type of price point it's going to be involved. This this right now is hard to beat. If you want all those bells and whistles, you want the integral nature, you want that incredible feeling of action. You want the thing to be freaking laser perfect, right? If you've ever asked yourself, what kind of knife would I spend 600 bucks on? And your brain comes back with, immediately your brain goes, it better be freaking laser perfect. It better be perfect. The execution is there. It's perfect. But then as a bonus, you're going to get a knife that looks beautiful, has fantastic lines, fantastic functionality, and just feels like an extension of the human hand. This knife is extremely good. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell by this review. At $600, it's kind of, at 550 bucks, I would say, um, you know, if, if this were 550, which is just 50 less, I mean, at this point, if you're gonna spend 550, 600 doesn't look that crazy. If you're looking for a, a knife in the $50 territory and then you, a $100 knife pops up, you're like, that's double the price, right? So it's, you know, it's one of those things where you have to take it into perspective. At $600, I think the price is about fair for the, the level of quality that we are looking at here, right? At $550, I would have just been like, this is, I'm absolutely completely and totally blown away by the price. How did they even do this? But at $600, I'm gonna say this is fair and you will be hard pressed to find anything out there right now that can compete with this thing, not just in terms of materials, but overall quality and execution. This is very, very good. God, I wish that that was just a simple milled titanium clip with no ball, right? But if this had, I wish that I had actually experienced this in 2021 because it would have been in my contenders, you know, for the, the best knives of 2021. Uh, I am so proud to have this as a part of my collection and I do not regret at all paying full price for this version. Again, you, you know, I think these are actually sold out. So no, there's no, nobody's forcing you to spend $1,250 on this guy, right? You have to really want these materials to do that. But as far as the pricing on the standard versions, again, do I think it's worth 600 to 700, right? I think the, the lowest cost one is the most fair. And then, you know, as you go up from there, you have to want those other materials. But yeah, I think we're there. I love this knife. This is going to go in my recommend. It's not often that I recommend knives that are so expensive, but it's just really that good. It's going to go in my recommended knives playlist, and it's going to go in my favorite knives of all time playlist because it's absolutely, I wouldn't have bought it if I didn't think it was that good. Very, very awesome. Liang Ma Model 18. Uh, use the links below to check it out. I hope it's still available. Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.